Hello and welcome to PoliSci Book Club. I'm Kayla and today we're going to be talking about the expansionist character of power as we continue through Bertrand de Juvenal's book on power, the natural history of its growth. Like and subscribe if you enjoy advanced political science concepts. So as we learned last time, Power has this dual nature, this dialectic, this back and forth that it's constantly doing between its egoistic urge to dominate and control combined with its increasingly altruistic will to serve society. And because of this dual nature, this combination of will to control and will to serve, there's no limit to power's ambitions in society and what it can absorb and control under its authority. Power is necessary for the continuation of society, especially our complex command societies that we exist in with all the different intricacies that are under the government authority, that need to be under the government authority, all this different stuff. And once we recognize this need, we have to understand how to preserve power. And in doing so, preserve our society. So the juvenile is going to talk about this dual nature as a way for power to grow. First, the egoistic stimulus for its growth is that it's constantly in need to control more things. It's constantly in need to regulate and exercise authority over more and more things, especially as society grows more complex. Some examples that I can think of are things like our interstate highway system and roads in general, our education system how it's been absorbed and increasingly brought under the authority of the government. Our air traffic controlling system, our army, all our different things that are under the government's authority. These things, power has a want to control. It has this egoistic need to absorb these things, to continue to move in and control things, just like it did when it first moved in and started dominating society, when it first rose up or came about as it dominated society. This egoistic urge doesn't go away. But this egoistic urge is combined with a social justification. People can lobby the government. They can add requests from the government that, the, that different social needs are met, that different programs are created to meet those needs. Groups can lobby the government. There's other powers within society that work in cooperation and often in opposition to state power that also drive the social justification for power's growth. And in this way, power becomes what the juvenile calls a repository for human hope. He says that we can request from the government and expect an answer and possibly a solution. We can have faith that our water is clean, that our food is not poisoned. We can have faith that we're going to receive an education, that our students are going to receive an education. We can have faith that our goods are going to be regulated, that our cars are not going to be exploding on us. We can have faith in all these different things that are under the government's authority. And in this way, it becomes a repository of human hope. And the juvenile is going to say, going to finish up by examining thought in power and the role that thought plays in increasing power. Thought is unlimited. There's no limit to what people can think up and, and request and imagine from the government. Programs that can be imagined. Uh, administrative apparatuses that can be imagined. Needs that can be imagined. And they go to the government 
and ask for the government to Im- use its power to put their thoughts into action. And in that way, thought, as it continually expands, it continually gives the government ideas and areas to control, areas to spread to, justifications to spread to those areas, different things like that. As much as we can think up for the government to do, the government will try to expand to do it. And all powers will try to expand to, do th- to meet these needs, to meet these wants, to meet these ideas. All right, next time we're going to talk about political rivalry, the relationship between state power and the individual powers within society and the cooperation and opposition that they often have. Thank you for watching.